Now, some missionary problems or phenomena. Inna Allah la yastahiyya yadriba masalam ma ba'udhafan fa ma fawqaha. Verily, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not ashamed to set forth a parable, even of a mosquito. When you have to give a parable or a simile, actually it doesn't matter with what thing you are comparing anything. There should be some similarity, some resemblance, because always a similitude or a parable is given to explain something with relation to some another thing which is known already to a person. So there should be a connection, logical relationship between the two. Not that something should be great. If you are going to give an example for something great, then something great is to be mentioned. If you are going to give an example for something which is very small, then something small is to be mentioned. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not ashamed of giving examples even of mosquitoes. What to speak of something more, if it is greater or smaller than that thing. Why this has been discussed? Because you know all these things, the punishments in heaven and the, what are the blessings in the, in the, in the punishment in the hell and the blessings of heaven, you know. Wordings are the same which we use here. Nar, fire. But that fire of hell is not like the fire of this world. There is no comparison. In the same way, the things which we know here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given the names of the Jannah also in the same way. But, the, but there is a world of difference between the essence of both the things. Names are the same. So these are so to say similitudes. These are parables. Inna Allah la yastahiyya yadriba masalam ma ba'udhatun fa ma fawqaha fa amma alladheena amanu fa ya'lamuna annahu alhaqq min rabbihi. So those people who believe, they know, they come to know for sure that this is haq, this is true from their Lord. Because it is actually within human beings, their ruh, their spirit, which testifies that this thing is correct. They don't see that what words are being used in a simile. They, they look to the essence of their simile or similitude and then they immediately come to the conclusion that verily it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا فَيَقُولُونَ مَاذَا أَرَادَ اللَّهُ بِهَذَا مَسَلَىٰ And those who have denied, who have refused to accept, who have, who have declared to be kuffar, they say, they object to it. مَاذَا أَرَادَ اللَّهُ بِهَذَا مَسَلَىٰ What has Allah intended by this parable or by this similitude? يُذِلُّ بِهِ كَسِيرًا وَيَهْدِ بِهِ كَسِيرًا it is in this way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides many people towards right and misguides others towards wrong. With this very Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala misleads many people according to their intentions because their intentions were not pure. So from Quran also, from these parables of the Quran also, they get something they get misguided. In spite, instead of getting the guidance to the right path, they are misguided. They add to their misguidance from Quran also because their intentions were not correct. And this is explained in the next ayah. Behi Kasira. And but those people whose intentions are correct, who are muttaqeen, who want to save themselves from wrong and error and falsehood, and who want to save themselves from the fire of hell. They get the guidance from this Quran. And Allah doesn't mislead or misguide except those who are rebellious in nature. Fisk means, you know, a rebellious nature. Who are in rebellion against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Only them Allah misguides. As I said, it is based on the intentions, on, the, on their own inclinations. If the inclination is bad, was wrong, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will mislead him. If the inclination, intention is correct, if he is sincere is in intention, then Allah will guide him. Who are those fasikeen? The rebellious people, disobedient people. Who break Allah's covenant after accepting that. That covenant will be discussed in Surah Al-Araf. 
that when we were in the form of spirits only, or you may call souls only, there were no bodies. Allah created all human beings, but in the form of spirits only. And from those about which the Prophet has been has said in one of the ahadis, al arwahu junudul mujannada. Those spirits were like armies, you know, all the human beings which were to come in this world till the doomsday. The spirits of all were created at one time. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took a covenant from them. Alastu bi rabbikum? Qalu bala. It will be discussed in Surah Al-Araf. Am I not your Lord, your Master? And they said, yes, why not? We accept you as our Lord, our Sustainer, our Master. This covenant, you know, every human being has come, has done and confirmed with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, has ratified with him this treaty before coming to this world. So actually, those people who are rebelling against that covenant, after making it, after ratifying it, after accepting it, and they cut what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has ordered or decreed to be joined. For example, you know, the relations, parents and, and you need the offspring, the brothers, brothers and sisters. Now this, the kith and kin, this relationship should be maintained, it should be respected. But they are breaking and cutting these relations. And they are doing mischief in this, in this earth. These are the people who are losers. They will be the losers. They will be in great loss on the day of judgment. A very beautiful question. Although it's not a question, it's a sign of exclamation. How do you disbelieve in Allah? How you reject Allah? How dare you reject Allah? And you were dead. And then he revived you. And brought you to life. Summa yumitukum. Then he will put you under death. He will make you to die. Summa yuhiyikum. Then again, he will bring you to life. Now this is actually a very big philosophical question of Quran. We were dead before coming to this world. What does it mean? We were not non-existent. A dead thing is an existing thing. Dead body lying, it's not living, dead body. But it is non, it is not non-existent, it is existing. So we were existing, but in the state of death. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revived us. They brought us to life. Then he will again put us to death. And then he will again revive us. Now out of these things we know this life, we know the death which is coming after this life. And then we know the resurrection. That will be, we will be brought to life again on the day of resurrection. But the first thing, you know, mostly people ignore it. Actually, we were dead, what does it mean? We were only in the spiritual forms before coming to this world. And we were asleep. Just as you know, in a cold storage, all the souls, the spirits of human beings were created at one time. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took a covenant from them, Alastu rabbikum, qalu bala. And then put, to, put them to sleep. And this sleep actually is the condition of death. Then you might have, you might be remembering the supplication and the prayer of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When he woke up every morning, what was the prayer? Alhamdulillah illadhi ahyani ba'dama amatani wa ilahi nushur. All praise will be to Allah who has again brought me to life after he had put me to death and in the same way one day I shall rise from the sleep of death and will go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala return to him Alhamdulillah illadhi ahyani badama amatani wa ilahi nushu so actually sleep is also sleeping is also like death it has something similar similarity between the two there is a similarity so we were then, what does this mean? We were in the, in, we were asleep as spirits. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us this body in this world. We came here with the soul as well as this body. 
then we shall be we shall die the soul will return to allah subhanahu wa taala this body will return to this clay to this earth again from which it has come and then allah subhanahu wa taala will again bring us from this very clay minha khalaqnakum wa fiha nu'idukum wa minha nukhrijukum taratan ukhra so these are the stages of human life this ayah has a very important philosophical connotation but this subject will be discussed you know in very clear terms in surah al ghafir or surah al mumin that is the 24th part of of the quran huwa allazi khalaqa lakum ma fil ardh jamia again you know a very philosophical issue it is he who has created for you whatever is on the earth very important that man is the central creation of allah subhanahu wa taala he has created this universe for man that is why there is a hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam inna ma dunya khulqat lakum wa antum khulqtum lil akhirah this world has been created for you and you have been created for akhirah huwa allazi khalaqa lakum ma fil ardh jamia the same subject will continue in the next section that is why the khilafa the subject of khilafa is discussed in the next section because this this world has been created for you you are going to be the khalifa for this world, for this earth so actually the same subject has been discussed here which will be discussed in full length in the next section huwa allazi khalaqa lakum ma fil ardh jamia thumma istawa ila as-sama then he turned towards the skies fasawwa hunna sab'a samawat and then he divided them into seven skies wa huwa bi kulli shay'in alim and he knows everything everything is in his knowledge 